This is my personal thoughts on Zack Snyder's Justice League. And in case you're wondering why I'm doing this, it's because one, outside of animation, I enjoy watching superhero movies like Marvel and DC. I finished watching every episode of WandaVision, and I'm currently watching some new episode of Falcon and the Winter Soldier on Disney+. Plus. Well, by the way, I'll make the squid and what do I think about the other DCEU movies. Uh, Man of Steel, like it. Batman v Superman, oh. Suicide Squad, also didn't like. Wonder Woman, loved it. The original Justice League, meh. Aquaman, liked it. Shazam, liked it. Birds of Prey, liked it. And Wonder Woman 1984, also liked. So, in order to understand why this is called Zack Snyder's Justice League compared to the 2017 Justice League movie, there was a background history. Zack Snyder was the original director of the original 2017 Justice League movie, but he stepped out of the director's chair because he lost his daughter, so Joss Whedon had to take over for him. But after the movie was released, the film became a box office bomb, and Warner Bros. decided to focus standalone DC movies like with Shazam, Aquaman, and a few others. However, fans of DC and even the cast and crew of the movie demanded that Warner Brothers release a new Justice League, this time with the full vision of Zack Snyder. Now, when I heard the news about this new Justice League movie and even hearing the hashtag release the Snyder cut, I pretty much had my doubts over this movie because you know the last time Zack Snyder released the most anticipated superhero movie? It definitely didn't work. Even Warner Brothers makes fun of Batman v Superman's existence. And yes, I know there's an Ultimate Edition of Batman v Superman, but they act more like additional scenes for the movie rather than a revised version, much like the new version of the Justice League. And because of the polarizing reactions of Man of Steel and the failure of Batman v Superman, I was not hyping up for this movie at all. However, I had HBO Max, I finally give in, and I turn it on, and... I like this better than the original version. Now, does that make it one of the best superhero movies? No, it's one of your surprisingly good superhero movies. So in case you don't know what was the Justice League movie about, it takes place after the events of Batman v Superman, where Superman sacrificed himself to destroy Doomsday, thus killing himself with the Kryptonite Spear. This results in a supervillain named Steppenwolf to take his chance to take over the world, but Batman, played by Ben Affleck, and Wonder Woman, played by Gal Gadot, decided to form a team called the Justice League. They recruited the King of Atlantis named Aquaman, a speedy boy named The Flash, and a part-human, part-robot named Cyborg to team up to defeat Steppenwolf, but also try to figure out a way to bring back Superman back from the dead. The reason why this version is better than the 2017 version is that it has a proper structure on making a superhero group team. It has a beginning about why they want to form this Justice League team with some origins on who they are and where they come from. A middle where they try to find all the mother boxes and try to come up with a plan to defeat Steppenwolf. And an ending where all the members of the Justice League come together and defeat Steppenwolf once and for all, but also be ready for the next big threat, which is Darkseid. This is more evident with Ray Fisher as Cyborg, where we finally see an origin story rather than telling us on how Victor Stone became the Cyborg. They show us a flashback about what was his life was like before he became part robot, and how he's feeling about right now being part human and part robot, especially with his relationship with his dad. Another thing that's an amazing bonus is that we see the inner mind of Cyborg to see how he hacks into the system. I also give this version credit to explain how Flash can travel through time now, which explains his role in Batman v Superman, and the visuals are pretty cool when he actually does it. Even the action scenes, as long as they are, got a lot better and even more intense than they were originally made. These include the chase scene involving the Amazons and Steppenwolf, the flashback with the Green Lantern, the Atlanteans, the people on Earth, and the Amazon fighting against Steppenwolf, Darkseid, and their minions, and even the climax where all the teams come together to defeat Steppenwolf. Now, there are still some problems with this version of the movie that it forgot to remove some of the bad parts from the 2017 movie, one in which is the villain Steppenwolf. Now, he is given a backstory about why he's doing this, because he was demoted by Darkseid and he's trying to reinstate his reputation. However, since he's still the main villain of this entire movie, he's still boring. Even his new CGI design doesn't help either. He just looks like an early prototype design of Megabyte. 
The one thing that was satisfying to me regarding the villain in this new version of the Justice League is that he has a more satisfying defeat than he had in the 2017 version. Because when I saw the 2017 version, his actual defeat felt like a ripoff of the defeat of the villain from Rise of the Guardians. I won't give too much away of what his defeat actually looks like in this version, but wow, I did not see that coming. And the second problem with this movie is that it's over four hours long. Yeah, it is split until at least six parts, including the epilogue, but if you had to choose between a four-hour movie and a miniseries, always pick the miniseries for HBO Max. Now, if you ever decide to watch the whole movie with no breaks whatsoever, there's a chance you might feel a little bit sleepy, and you'll just pretty much just check mark all the things that will occur in this movie. Like, you'll check mark the scene where Wonder Woman comes in to save everyone in the bang, the flashback, the Justice League trying to take down Superman, or at least come to his senses, and the big climax involving Seven. Well, that's exactly how I feel when I went through the entire movie without breaks. So, if you ever decide to watch this movie, take at least three breaks after the first two chapters so that you can process everything about what's going on or what these characters are going to do and what we learn from them. Now, ever since this version of the movie was finally released, people are now feeling sad that we might never see the Snyder version of the Justice League since the sequels have been cancelled because of the box office failure. So... Do I feel bad that we're never going to see sequels to Justice League 2 and 3 where we see Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, and the rest take down Darkseid and other upcoming supervillains like Deathstroke or anything like that? Yes and no. The reason why I say that is that on the one hand, I do want to see where the DCEU is going where the Justice League are now facing a bigger threat, Darkseid, who could be the biggest supervillain since Thanos from the Avengers movie. And I definitely want to see some upcoming Justice League members, not just Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, The Flash, and Cyborg. But on the other hand, I'm really relieved that we don't have to see what's going to happen to Superman in the future. Now, I won't spoil too much, but if you see the epilogue, you know exactly what I mean. And especially when you see the cover of Zack Snyder's Justice League, where we see the black suit he's wearing. Now, Henry Cavill is a good Superman, and he pulled off really well in both versions of the Justice League. It's just that the way they're building up what Superman's gonna become in the future, it suffers this cliche that I'm so sick and tired of in the DC Extended Universe movie, and that is, is Superman a threat or a menace? The problem is not the character itself, it's that the way people are reacting to Superman on how he saves the world and how he's written in here. And this is more evident with the scenes of Batman v Superman, where Superman's statue gets graffiti, and Lex Luthor tried to frame Superman of blowing up the Capitol. Let's not forget the one line why Suicide Squad was invented is just so they can prevent the next Superman. And even after he saved the world from General Zod and Doomsday, some people still see him as a threat or a menace, and it's not just his enemies. You see, the Superman that we all know represents a symbol of hope. He doesn't get shamed or scowled for anything because he does so many superheroic deeds. It wouldn't have been better if people in this movie would just acknowledge and accept Superman of who he really is. A superhero, somewhere in the veins of the old classic TV shows or the Richard Jodder movies. So yeah, it's sad that we might not see the dark side phase of the Justice League, but maybe Superman deserves a reboot just as much as the Batman. And those are my thoughts on Zack Snyder's Justice League. Did you like this version? Do you think it's better than the original version? Well, feel free to leave in the comments below. I'm Matt Hair Patrick. Now that we finished that superhero movie on streaming service, it's time to move on to the next biggest superhero movie on streaming service.